Well, a very good morning to you uh, for this all-age service at St. Mark's. Welcome to you who are here in church live. Uh, but, of course, we also are saying hello to all of those at home watching on the tablets and screens. And, of course, those who will probably be catching up afterwards as well. A very warm welcome to you. It's great to share some time together in song and prayer and worship to the Lord. Do fill up the, uh, the chat function, say hello to everyone, give your greetings as we will be here in the service today. Well, we're entering strange times, aren't we, as we are looking at the next stage of this pandemic as we perhaps set our sights on a little bit further ahead and emerging from our so houses and communities again. And I think it's no coincidence then that we should look perhaps further afield at the things happening around our world. And we've got Christian Aid Week, which is about to come upon us as well. So we're looking at the time ahead with our friends around the world. And I don't think there's any better way, actually, this morning than to think about our mission partners from this church around the world. And this morning we're going to be looking at... Um, a formalized mission partner in Uganda. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, we have this link with a couple of schools in Uganda uh, that are at different stages of development, and we're going to be hearing more from Ian today about one of those schools that is in the early stages of development there. Uganda is a beautiful country, not dissimilar to our home country here in the UK. Plenty of rain, as we've been experiencing recently. It's a country full of resource. Uh, one of the main crops, actually, is coffee. So if you're drinking nice coffee at the moment, there's a good chance you'll be drinking some Ugandan coffee uh, grown and produced in this area where the faith school is this morning. Well, as we hear about everything this morning, let's reflect again on our own place in God's world, our faith as individuals, our faith, our spirituality as a church and a church community. And so we pray together. Let's begin our service with this prayer. Lord, thank you that you are always with us, no matter where we are, in our homes, in our work, in our church. We pray for each and every one of us, wherever we meet you this morning, virtually, digitally. Teach us something new today, but give us a sense of your unchanging comfort in a changing world, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Rain down on us your grace, your goodness, and your peace. And we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, we're going to begin with an opening song from Uganda, some words, and we're going to be invited to say some of Ugandan words later. So uh, it comes with an advisory. Yeah. 
And so we come to our opening prayer, and our opening prayer um, is going to focus on our theme uh, this morning, which is about mission and our mission and our mission links. So let us pray. Lord our God, help us to walk with you on the pathway to live out your mission in today's world. Bind us to all peoples so that together we may bring the good news to the ends of the earth. Open our hearts and our Christian communities to the needy, the afflicted, the oppressed. May we radiate the living Christ and transform lives in the hope of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we now come to our responses. So please join in um, with all. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing Nothing can can separate separate us from from your love. love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing, and peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. We now come to our confession. And in our confession, we're actually going to use some words from Uganda. So when I say, Lord, have mercy, the response is, Mukama waskisa. You'll see that come up on the screen. So it's Mukama waskisa which actually means, Lord, have mercy. So let us have a moment of quiet while we bring to mind those things for which we wish to confess. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives, Lord, have mercy. Mukama waskisa. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Lord, have mercy. Mukama waskisa. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Lord, have mercy. Mukama Waskisa. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Lord, have mercy. Mukama Waskisa. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Lord, have mercy. Mukama Waskisa. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, We know him no longer in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is... In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, 
not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here ends the reading. Good morning, everyone. 
It's good to see you this morning. It's a pleasure to have Ian with us this morning to give us an update on what's been going on with the schools that we're linked with in Uganda and to hear a little bit more about that project. And I'm very glad to say that we've got over our slight technical issues before the service to be able to bring the presentation that he's got for us. So I'm going to hand over to Ian now, who's going to lead the next part of this service for us. Still not switched on. That's it. Great. Good to go. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. Um, th this morning, I just want to give a brief update uh, on the, the the school in Uganda that um, I, I'm connected with. Um, I'll have to um, wake up the computer just a moment, so bear with me. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, the school that uh, I'm, I'm most connected with is uh, Pusiliwa Faith School, which is up in the mountains of Uganda in the eastern part of the country. Uh, this morning, I thought I would, rather than me talk a lot, I'd let the, the people at the school, in particular David, the director of the school, do, do most of the talking, so that uh, you, you can see what it's, what it's like in, in, in Uganda. So I, I should say this, this is um, the, the children in the uh, church or the chapel at the school. They, uh, they congregate there most days, but uh, certainly on a, on a Wednesday they have um, a leadership uh, period when uh, so some of the clergy come into the school, and they have a chaplain at the school called Monica, and uh, St. Mark's very kindly gave me a Bible to take out, and I gave it to Monica, who, who I say is the, is the chaplain at the school. So these are the, the school. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Okay, just a quick reminder of where Uganda is. It's right in the center of Africa. It uh, is surrounded by a number of uh, other countries like, um, you can see from the map, Kenya, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda, and Tanzania. Or they call it Tanzania uh, in Uganda. Um, and on the southern side is, is Lake Victoria. So Busliwa School and uh, the district of Baduda is up in the mountains of uh, Uganda. From Kampala or in Tebe, you can see uh, Kampala, which is on the uh, shores of Lake Victoria, uh, and in Tebe is where the airport is. It takes about six or seven hours to get by car from uh, Entebbe to Imbali is the main city there, and then it's probably another hour up into the mountains to uh, to go to the school. So I'll just let David talk. Um, to, to me, David is uh, an inspiration. He's a young man. He's in his 20s. He uh, lived in uh, Mbali, which is the main city there. He decided that he, he needed to do something, and uh, he formed this school with his father and his brothers, who are teachers at the school. And it, it's an amazing story, I feel, that uh, he's so dedicated, and despite all the all the problems that um, he has at the school, you know, which would cripple many of us, I'm sure. Uh, he continues to have faith uh, that things will, will happen for the school by prayer, and uh, he, he continues day after day to support the school. So here is, here is David.
Yeah, my name is Kola David. I'm a Ugandan by nationality, aged by 29 years. Uh, my religion is Anglican Church. I started uh, the school in 2013. The school is called Wusiwa Faith Junior School, whereby the school was started in the mountainous areas. And uh, after we realized that the landslide is going to occur, the school was shifted to a flat area called Bromesel, Kiholota Uni Council, Bulovi Ward, in the Bududa district. Uh, we are from Eastern Uganda. After settling the school to a flat area, there are very many challenges we are facing, like uh, the most challenge, uh, teachers' payment or salary for employees. The school has got, uh, at the moment, we have uh, six classes. Uh, that is from primary two to primary six. P7 got their holidays after their PLOE. So it is my request to whoever is willing to come in and give a hand to our teachers because salary has become a very big challenge. Another thing, the environment, like classroom environment, there is too coldness in the classes whereby our children are facing difficulties of coldness and the jikas. Therefore, we ask whoever is willing to come in to make these children happy life. Uh, another challenge, when we shifted from the mountainous area to this flat area, of course we shifted with some of the children who were misplaced, who are homeless after the landslide occurred and swept the homes of many parents, including their property. Therefore, there is need of completing the children is home. Thank you. Okay, perhaps I should point out that English is not their first language. Um, as you saw on the screen, there are many different languages in Uganda. Uh, so uh, he, he speaks a particular language on the eastern part. Uh, well, there's a tribal area called Masaba, and uh, they, they live there and speak a different language. And across Uganda, you have many different languages and many different tribes. Um, I, I, should, I should say that uh, David wanted to add a, add a, a little bit on, on to this so that uh, you, you get a, a fuller picture. So he, uh, he, he sent this as well. Yeah, uh, another thing that I want to add on, uh, our school is having 150 children, uh, all the children right from primary to ranging to the age of uh, 9 to 17. Uh, the school is having 10 teachers and the five non teaching staff. Uh, the surrounding countries, uh, we have Kenya, we have Rwanda, we have South Sudan, then Tanzania. So we are happy to see that you are hearing us from Uganda. We love you all and we love you. We wish you a good moment. Thank you. Okay, I, I took some pictures, aerial pictures, when I was out there with a drone in 2019. So this is a school that they brought down from the mountainous area to flat land on his um, father's land. When, when I was there, the church hadn't been built, or the chapel. Uh, it's been consecrated, and we met Reverend Alice, who lives about uh, five miles from here, who looks after the church. And uh, at the moment, you can see from here, there's approximately 200 pupils, but he said 150 because they've had to reduce the number of children they can take by the governments at the moment because they have classes, uh, primary one to seven. They're only allowed primary uh, two to six at the moment because of COVID. Um, they have a nursery class over the, over the side there, and children usually start about four, five, and they have three classes, baby class, which is obviously entry into the school, 
uh, middle class and top class, and then they graduate into primary one to seven. He said they take children up to 17, which, you know, for a primary school is unheard of in this country, but uh, I think if you fail a year, you have to resit it. So some of the children, you know, are, are resitting each year, so they, they, they tend to get fairly old. Um, the 10 orphans, I, I should say that they took in 10 orphans because in this area it's very mountainous and if they get heavy rains, it's very volcanic uh, soil. So the, the soil, the, the water gets in behind the volcanic soil and the whole thing goes. And they have routinely maybe two or three uh, landslides every year. And, uh, you know, homes and people get washed away in these, these landslides. In 2010, it took 300 people in one, one landslide. When I've been out there, um, 18, 20 people, you know, have lost their homes and their lives. And they, the school has taken in these 10 orphans whose parents were lost in a landslide. So because of poverty, they have to farm these very steep inclines and live on these inclines because it's their land. Uh, so they... Although the government has started to move people out of this area to flat land, you know, they, it is their homeland and they don't want to live in a different area. Okay, moving on. Uh, the school, as David said, was started in 2013 and moved to flatlands in 2018. This is the start of the school and how they build schools. So it's very much mud or clay and, uh, and wood framework. Uh, the, 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 when I, I took this photograph because it was, they invited me to a parent teachers association meeting at the new school, and they were just building it then. So the people congregated in that uh, structure were from a, a parent teachers uh, group. And the guy on the right there, well, the guy on the left is David, the guy on the right there is the head of the parent teachers association. So you can see it's moved on dramatically since, since 2018. Uh, so I'll, I'll let David talk, talk to you again. These, these are the teachers uh, of the school, or some of the teachers of the school. There's 10 altogether. Yeah, briefly, this was the speech from our head teacher. Uh, I appreciate uh, St. Marka Church uh, for the support, the previous support which you gave in, and at least it made a very big change. Uh, now, uh, at the moment, uh, head teacher have been talking about the challenges we've been facing at least uh, our teachers uh, just uh, volunteering because we do not have salary to pay them since the parents have been in the local down whereby they lost their businesses uh, they don't have what to do so the school fees we've been collecting from the children is no longer coming so we still need your prayers so that uh, God can provide a way so that our teachers uh, can be able to receive funds or to receive their salaries. So thank you very much for listening to us. My name is Clover David, the director of Busiriwa Nursery and Primary School. Thank you. David, David likes, likes flamboyant clothes. He's, uh, his wife's a tailor, so uh, I think that's where he gets it from. Um, so the, the issues at the moment, the pandemic that uh, hit the world, um, you know, Uganda wasn't spared. They locked down very quickly. I, I was due to fly out on the 23rd of March uh, last year, 2020, and the, the flight was cancelled and the, the world went into lockdown. So for many months, you know, they were in severe lockdown. And it's not like this country. They rely heavily on taxis, which are sort of Volkswagen... 16-seaters uh, to get around, but mainly they use motorcycles. Motorcycles are called Boda Boda because uh, they used to flip between Kenya and Uganda and bring all sorts of things, but now everyone's main source of transport is motorcycles, and I've seen families of four plus a driver on a motorcycle, so, you know, from a health and safety point of view, you'd be very alarmed if you saw, um, and ladies um, sit side saddle on motorcycles. So, um, you know, it, it is very much a, uh, what they do out there. In terms of the lockdown, they stop motorcycles completely for several weeks. So getting food and, and everything else was very difficult. They, they opened up that, and slowly, slowly, they've, they've opened things up. As David said, the school normally takes 200 people, pupils. Um, it's now 150 because of the, the shortening of the classes they can take. Um, 
Many families, of course, lost their, their work and their businesses during the pandemic, so it's a knock-on effect, a vicious circle, if you like, because they have no money to pay school fees, they have no money, therefore, the school to pay teachers and do other things that they need to do within, within schools. So the teachers don't get paid, and the very little money that they do have is shared out amongst the teachers. So, so the main immediate issues for the school are is they need to put a roof on the, um, the orphanage, and I'll come on to that. Um, they need to provide orphans with um, school materials, and very often in Uganda, and I, I guess it's worse since I was there, is that kids that uh, whose parents can't afford to send them to school just stay at home. So there's many hundreds of thousands of children just being at home rather than, than going to school. So this is David telling us about the, where the orphans live at the moment and what his um, aspiration is for the orphans in the future. Yes, at the moment, this is uh, a home where the shared house are now staying and uh, God has helped me to uh, begin up with the uh, children's home, where I'm going also to show you. Thank you. Okay, uh, they, they live in not very good conditions at the moment, to be fair. Um, now is the rainy season, and when it rains in Uganda, it comes down like stair rods. You know, it really does rain heavily, but. Uh, as soon as this, the, the rain goes, the sun comes out and it dries very quickly. So this is their ambition. They, they have built this school up to the roof level with um, bricks that have been donated locally and uh, labor and uh, cement, but uh, they, they need to, to raise the roof now. Yeah, uh, again, I would like to let you know that this is a new children's home we are building and it is my uh, request to whoever can be willing to support. We now have only a challenge of iron sheets and timbers so that we can finish up with this building. So thank you very much for your prayers. This is Children's Home and uh, we are about to put timbers but we lack money for buying timbers and iron sheets. Thank you very much. Okay, so th there we are with the school at the moment. You know, things are happening in Uganda. Children are going to school, or some of them are going to school at the moment, but many are staying at home. And uh, they, they just seek your prayers to, uh, to enable them to, to get to a, a, a better future. This was on a, a very sunny day in um, January 2019. Um, things are probably not the same as they, they are now. So thank you very much for your attention. and. Uh, I'll hand over to Jonathan now. Thank you, Ian. It's great to see that project happening there in Uganda. And as we're watching that, we're seeing God's goodness, aren't we, at work? Yes. As those lives are kind of reconstructed after those terrible mudslides. We're 2010, weren't they? I think. Uh, well, not, not these, those, but these yes. These ones were later, yes, later yes. on, weren't they? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to just ask you a few questions, if that's all right, just to inform our prayer time, because yes. that's one of the main things we can do as a church, is to be praying for this development um, over there. So we, we sent out this Bible, didn't we, a couple of years ago. Um, yes. Do, do you know that Bible's been used in the chapel? And yes, the of course. Uh, Monica, who's a school Monica's chapel. using that. And how, how more generally is the Bible important to that community? Well, it's very important. I, I think, you know, the strength and resilience comes from the Bible and the, the teaching of, of Jesus. Yes. Um, they're very strong in their, their faith. And it gives them enormous strength and, and particularly resilience. Yeah. You know, the, the, the children uh, seem so happy, you know, because of the, the lot that they've, they've, they've been handed. But uh, e even so, they, they, they seem to be, you know, very positive. Uh, They're understanding what's so good about prayer life as well, yes, as yeah. well as looking at scripture. And yeah. can, you, can you think of one thing, one prayer that's been answered for them as they've I, I think the help that's, that's come from some marks and, and, and various other things, you know, they, they have this ongoing issue with paying teachers, getting funds into the school, um, a whole range of things, I, I, I think, and, and just help generally from people from outside the area. 
And of course, we, you, you had pictures of the orphans there, which was great to see, and we've been following their development, haven't we, over the last few years, and they're, they're coming on really great. But yeah, one of, the, one of the main challenges, would you say, for those particular group of orphans going into this next era? Yeah, I, in terms of the school, you know, the, the orphans that they have there get free education at the school, which is great, and they, they've got some pastoral care, you know, wrapped around that as well. Um, but some of the children are getting older now, and after primary, they go on to secondary. And I think the challenge, because they have a challenge getting funds into the school from people paying fees, but they have a challenge now paying fees for the, the orphans as they, they progress to the next school, the secondary school. Brilliant. Well, it's been great to see you, uh, your involvement there. We're obviously praying for David, for Alice, for Monica, for all the work that they're doing. And, and just something personal about you, Ian. Of how has your faith been impacted by helping in this project? Well, I, I think the, the inspiration um, of, of David and his, his strong faith, you know, has been an inspiration to me. And the, the resilience that, that he has to, to go through his faith and... Um, you know, to, to work with the school and, and develop the school and always be praying that uh, things will be better tomorrow. So even though he hasn't got many resources, what he has, he, gi he gives to the Lord and the Lord's work. Exactly, It's just yeah. amazing to see his energy and yeah. his uh, obedience, really, to God's call there. Yes. Well, thank you, Ian, again for that. So I'm going to pray now for the project, okay. and thank you for in informing the prayers. So as we come to a time of prayer now, let us just... Uh, bring our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers to this project and all the other things that we're praying for this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this link with our sisters and brothers in Busaliwa, Uganda, for the reminder that we are joined by faith to our friends all around the world. We pray that these bonds of faith will be strengthened even during these pandemic times and together we collectively hold your word as a lamp to our paths, a light to our feet. As we think about Uganda, we think about all the other areas of this world, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Colombia, Palestine and Israel, and especially at this time, the crisis in India with the pandemic. As we think about the week of Christian aid coming up, we pray for the aid organizations. We acknowledge your power, Lord, and pray for your kingdom to come. Mukama Waskisa, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for answered prayers, for the answered prayers of food, education, provision in those schools. We pray for particularly for David running that project with Alice and Monica as they lead the services and draw people into faith in that church school. We pray for financial help that they will receive and use efficiently that that they've been given, building secure classrooms, enabling students to learn and receive education. Lord, we hold up those 10 orphans, Tansy, Evelyn, Sharon, Ruth, Madina, Sarah, Esther, Aramanzan, Patience, and Carolyn, as they receive the education and accommodation, help them to know your love for them through the practical help of the school. And we pray for good sanitation in that area. Take away feelings of fear and anxiety as they balance the need to be vigilant with social interaction alongside the culture of close community. As we think of families there adjusting to new ways of life, so we remember ourselves, Lord, families, all age, young and old, in our work, in our schools, in our churches, in this town. Prompt us all to speak with words of kindness and encouragement, even when we feel worn out. Mukama waskisa, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you know the situations of deep poverty around our world. Countries like Uganda are blessed with rich resources in coffee, food and minerals. But we pray, Lord, that that will filter down to the poorest and the standards of living, care, education and health will be more widely available. 
We pray for our country here in the UK that the local elections will mean fairer governance and poverty here may also, and even in our society, be eradicated. Lord, let us as a worldwide church bring a message of hope that we can share far and wide, no matter the strife happening in our world. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Ukamo askisa, Lord, have mercy. And finally, Lord, we thank you for Ian, for Brenda, for all of those involved in the Ministry of Mission at St. Mark's here in our global community. And also for those working in our home community, for ways in which they have helped this year, for the information they bring to us. And so be with Ian, Lord, as he continues to encourage that project, giving his time and knowledge and expertise. Help him and the others to remain steadfast in Christ, to carry on caring with a compassionate faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Mukamo Askisa, Lord, have mercy. Amen. And so, as we join with all of the countries around the world that will know this prayer, let us pray that prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing again. So now we're going to continue by saying our creed together. Would you like to stand?
And so together we say, let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. Just as by way of leading into our notices a little bit um, for our service today, um, I just wanted to say a few kind of um, final remarks about um, what we've been doing in the service. You may be aware that um, our home groups, or most of our home groups, are now doing this course, the Difference course. And what we've been trying to do with this service is actually apply a little bit some of the good habits that the Difference course asks us to employ when we're thinking about how we interact with other people, and particularly with people who are different to us. And um, the first habit, good habit, is to be curious. And in being curious, we're listening to others' stories and listening, looking at the world through their eyes. And what we've tried to do this morning with the videos that we've had from David uh, from the school in Uganda is to actually see something of their experience in the school and what's going on for them through their eyes, to actually begin to understand a bit more clearly about what life is like for them. So in one sense, we're following that habit of being curious. We're also being present, which is the second of the habits that we're asked to employ, being present because you know we have a presence there at the school. We have Ian going backwards and forwards there. We have that link between ourselves. We have that relationship which is growing. So we are having a presence there and they are having a presence with us. So we are in really cementing that sense of relationship, building trust and engaging with them, which is really important. And the third habit we're asked to think about is to reimagine to think differently about how the world can be because we have that relationship with someone who is different to us, who, has, who comes from a different culture, lives in a different place, has different life experiences. Reimagine what it's like and take the opportunities to think about how things can change for us and for them and how that relationship can be strengthened. So that's what we've been trying to do uh, this morning, is to try and just employ some of those habits that are in the difference course that our home groups have started this week. If you're not in a home group and you'd really like to join us for the difference course, there are four more sessions of this course. Um, we had a great time in our group on uh, Wednesday evening. Lots of really good deep discussion and I know that's been going on in the other groups as well. If you're not part of a home group and you would like to, to join and know a bit more about what it's about, have a word with Glenn, Jonathan or me or one of the home group leaders. There are one or two in church today. If you're watching from home, do give us a ring, send us an email, and get on one of, get into one of the home groups and do this course with us because it's really going to help us to open up you know, how we think about the world around us and people who are different from us. Well, that's enough of the difference course, a plug. I've got to do some notices as well now, um, which uh, start with as always, uh, the Bands of Marriage. So I published the Bands of Marriage between Jordan Liam Holland and Bethany Ann Barnacle, both of the parish of St. James Fleckhamstead. And this is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these people may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Well, we've got a number of couples who are being married 
both in this church and who have asked for their bands to be read here because they're being married in other churches. So let's just pray for them now. Father, we think of all those couples who are to be married shortly, particularly at this time while there are still restrictions on what can happen with their marriage services. We pray for all those who are embarking on this great journey and adventure of marriage. And we ask for your blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Jonathan has already mentioned Christian Aid Week, which starts tomorrow, which is another way of being involved with the world and a good thing to, to be doing. Um, those of you that received the weekly e email would have had an e-envelope link where you can go to the Christian Aid website and your donation will be credited to the, uh, the rugby group uh, for Christian Aid. Do please uh, follow that link and make a donation in that way because there are no door-to-door -door collections this year. Um, so it's really the only way that you can donate to Christian Aid. And it would be good to do it through that e-envelope because then the local group will know how much we've managed to raise locally. And the last thing I want to mention is that, uh, of course, there is virtual coffee at 11.45. It would be good to see you on Zoom then. So shall we stand as we have our last hymn this morning, In Christ Alone.
thank you once again, Ian, for joining us this morning and for you joining us at home and, of course, our congregation here in church. I'm just going to leave you with this blessing now. Creator God, you give us seed to sow and bread to eat. Make us thankful for what we have and help us with generous hearts to supply needs to others as we receive. So the whole world may give you thanks and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us always. Amen.